Okay, so I'm going to go over again the, the idea of the attributes of God. I talked about that a little bit last week, but I, I want to return to it because I think it's worth, it's worth uh, dwelling on a little bit because we're trying to figure out what it is that people were trying to formulate when they were formulating these representations. And we've sort of come to the conclusion that there, there, there is an attempt to abstract out the nature of power from specific aspects of power and there's some attempt to associate that with consciousness as that which gives rise to being itself and there's some attempt to associate that consciousness with something that has a cosmic quality whatever that might mean and, and it's a statement that it has a cosmic quality rather than, rather than a discovery it's a mere statement that there's that there's something about consciousness that has world-generating significance and also the implication that it's associated with human beings as well. It's a, very, and it's a very interesting set of propositions and I don't believe that they're simply refutable. Like it, it's a perfectly coherent argument even though it's primarily made metaphorically. And So then, once again, I want to build up the, the framework of associations around the idea of God. One of the things that Freud did when he was interpreting dreams, and it's quite useful, you know, so if someone comes to me with a dream then I have them tell me the whole dream and then I get them to repeat it line by line and then whenever they say a line and, and it, there's an object in it or a person or something like that, I ask them what that makes them remember or what that thing means to them or what comes to mind and that's the associational technique and it's predicated on the idea that your memory works by association and you know that if you're daydreaming you know you go from one thing to another like a conversation does and that you can take an idea that's at the center of a web of associations and by tracking the associations you can kind of zero in on what the idea might mean and then Jung expanded that by trying to he called it to amplify the dream by thinking about, about narrative or literary or mythological similarities that, that might be associated with the narrative structure of the dream and, and I think often that can be unbelievably useful, you know, and it's like the dream is an idea that's trying to come to birth, it's, it's partly formulated and then if you discuss it and amplify it, it's like you can speed along its transformation into a more articulated idea and the dream is also something that because your brain, your mind is trying to, with one foot in the unknown, it's trying to formulate what's out there in the unknown and to make it concrete but, but it doesn't do that in one fell swoop it doesn't just take potential and turn it into to articulated ideas it has to dream up what's out there first projects its imagination out there to get a handle on what it might be and then that's presented in the dream and if you analyze the dream you can make it more articulate and so that's what we're going to do with the attributes of God to, to build up the representational structure a little bit so if you like this video, please give this a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more content like it, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, and have a beautiful day.